Hello, it is World Wide Web Wednesday, March 6th, 2019. Steve Cypress here just catching the end of a spectacular, beautiful day here. I know it's still technically winter, but spring has sprung. Temps uh, up to the mid 80s today, beautiful. I decided to wear my one of my baseball themed ugly red Hawaiian shirts, the official Diamondbacks ugly red Hawaiian shirt because baseball is in full swing here and the weather is absolutely beautiful and perfect these days. And uh, had a spectacular sunset as well. Dilly dallied a little bit, uh, finishing up some stuff getting out here, but you can catch just the remnants of it in the background as I record a brief video today. And Jeremy Danley is here. Great seeing you, my fantastic friend. So, what's this all about, this compliance issue? Uh, it's been a big deal for a little while. Uh, discussing this with a client today, if you are not getting results with your online copywriting effort, in fact, if you're even just getting slapped completely, and Facebook is not accepting your ads or Google is not showing your website as high as it used to be. That's because they have these rules that are particular to these platforms, but as the 800 pound gorillas in the room, Facebook and Google pretty much rule everything online for you showing up. Uh, unless, of course, you're using email or if you're driving people straight to your own website that you don't care where it ranks in Google or anything, you're sending your traffic there directly. Or, of course, if you're using still the number one best ROI uh, today, which is direct mail and just getting your stuff right to people. And, of course, you can use what's worked in copy for a long time, the most effective copy where you really dig into people's pain points and you twist the knife. And because, you know, it's another topic for another day, but... Hopefully, I don't have to tell you, if you pay attention and watch my videos, Jim is here, good seeing you, uh, that, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of salespeople, a lot of business owners, we're all salespeople at heart, we got to sell stuff or our business doesn't exist anymore, right? So when you're selling, you know, people, uh, Zig Ziglar, the late, great Zig Ziglar had a famous saying, the timid salespeople have skinny kids. If you're afraid to really get down and dirty and discuss with your prospects and your customers the problems that they're having and how, how much worse they're going to be if they don't take action, they're not going to take action and then you're not doing them any favors because they're going to stay with their problem and it is going to get worse and uh, they're going to disappear. And I, who, who work in business to business, talking to business owners all the time, there's a reason 90% of businesses go out of business. So I feel it's my job, just like a doctor. Doc, you wouldn't want to die. If you went into a doctor and you're coughing and huffing and puffing and walked in and you've been smoking two packs a day for 40 years, you wouldn't want a doctor to, to tread lightly and go like, well, you know, maybe if you just cut down to a pack and a half. Or, you know, maybe if you keep smoking those two packs, but, you know, just jog a little bit. Or take a nap, or I don't know, you wouldn't want him to be nice and sweet and soft and beat around the bush. You'd want him to get down and dirty with your problem, and if you don't take action, what's going to happen? If you don't stop smoking, you're going to die. I am dead serious, pardon the pun, I am totally serious, you must stop smoking now. That would be a good doctor. Well, that's what you want to be for your prospects and your clients. You want to tell them the truth. So, we use and, and have for, for as long as I've studied, going back as long as I've studied any kind of sales language, the most effective sales, sales language does this. You discuss the problem that your prospect has that obviously they have not solved or else they wouldn't be reading your sales message. So they still have this problem. A lot of them I'm included when I have problems and I refuse to admit it or I don't want to recognize it, but I certainly don't want to admit the severity of it and, you know, the, the urgency of me taking action. So I need a salesperson to let me know, to be strong and to let me know, hey, if you don't do such and such, this is going to happen. It's going to be a lot worse than it is now. So blah, 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 you ought to take action. Well, Here's the thing, and I'll cut to the chase. That kind of language, Facebook and Google don't like it. 
They don't like it. Facebook, in case you haven't noticed, they don't like negative stuff. They like warm and fuzzy feelings. They like when people post cat videos and what they had for lunch and all kinds of happy photos. And that kind of stuff goes viral and gets shown to everybody. And the only negative, painful stuff that people post on Facebook that really gets shown is when there are illnesses or deaths. When someone says, hey, can you pray from so-and-so, they're suffering from cancer, well, that can go viral. But if you sit there every day and you go like, another crappy day today, and you know, I really hate it when I'm sitting at a red light and the guy in front of me doesn't move. And but If you post that kind of negative stuff all the time, Facebook is not showing that to your people. They're hardly showing anything to anyone anyway, but they're not showing that stuff. And if you put that into a Facebook ad, they're going to reject the ad. It, it, ridiculous, but it's happening. So ads that have worked, websites that have worked for years, Google is now suddenly slapping and they disappear and hundreds of sales a day for marketers are just disappearing off the face of the earth. And so you can sit there and, try and tweak your copy a little bit. When I say copy, by the way, I don't mean like Xerox. I mean copy, I mean words, words that sell, copywriting. That's, that's what copy means. It means the words on a page or on the screen or on the device, on the website. So you can tweak the copy and say, well, let's make it a little milder or let's take out of it. And you'll get frustrated and it'll take you a lot of time. And if you're running ads, it'll cost you a lot of money until you understand that we need to do what we feel is what generally is just by definition, weakening the copy. We need to take all that, you're going to die if you don't do this, you're going to, you know, declare bankruptcy, your business is going to go under if you don't do that. We need to take all that language out of our ads, our social media stuff, our websites if we want to be found high up on Google. We need to take all that out. Our videos need to take all that out. And we need to post happy, relaxed, calm, statements tell stories positive stories with happy endings not leave it with hey let me tell you a story about a guy who didn't such and such and then his house got robbed and so he didn't buy the alarm so click here and get your alarm no let's tell the story of hey so and so uh, thought his house couldn't be robbed but then he, he luckily made the decision to get an alarm and then he read in the news that his neighbor's house was broken in and his neighbor on the other side was broken in but his wasn't because he had the alarm See, so the moral of the story is take that action and get your family feeling safe and warm and fuzzy and friendly and happy and all these happy kind of stuff with a happy ending and a happy story. And we all know the rules, the all-time tested proven rules of copy that that's weaker than drumming up all the pain and, and really twisting the knife uh, and, and getting someone boiling up with fear to take action. Facebook doesn't like that, and so they won't even accept the ad. So this, this, quote, weaker copy, they'll accept. And if you do it right, you'll start making sales. And if you do it really right, you'll make more sales than you ever did before. Because even if Facebook, if you're, if you're maybe you're watching this, you're saying, that's not true. My negative, you know, twist in the knife story is still up on Google and is still showing up. Well, might not be for long. You might want to, you know, file this one away, go back and, well, don't worry about it. Don't file this away. Just put the thought in the back of your mind. And I was going to say, you don't have to watch this video again. It's not like I told you so. Just file it in the back of your mind so that when the results start slowing down, maybe understand that could be why. Because of Facebook and Google's and all the websites pretty much following these kind of rules that they are liking the friendly, warm, weaker messages than the strong, fear-based, negative-based messages. And I think, you know, they're, they're accelerating that because a lot of that comes from the, the politics and kind of what's been going on the last few years since, since speaking of an entrepreneur, salesman who knows how to sell, Donald Trump, who sold himself into the White House with the fear-based negative message. We gotta build the wall and we gotta cancel that deal with China and we gotta, you know, go call Rocket Man names and tell him I got a big button, I'm gonna press the nuclear button and we we gotta set off all kinds of fear and unrest all around the world. We gotta tell all our allies you gotta pay up or else we're pulling our troops. All this, well, Facebook and, and Google being run by, of course, tremendous anti-Trumpers really don't like that and they've zeroed in on Hey, so therefore, in general, we just don't like the negative fear-based messaging. So pay attention and understand if you're writing 
to your own email list or you're mailing stuff out through the mail to people, you can say whatever you want, of course. But if you're on social media or if you want to be found and, and have your search engine optimized and have it show up at the top of Google and stay there, you might want to heed this message and soften the language to what you think is weaker and what is by definition weaker, but since it's the only thing that'll show up, by definition, it becomes stronger. Does that make sense? Hope it does. Phil is here, good seeing you, and Phil says, what a great challenge to reorient the copy. Yeah, if necessary. Like I said, if you're, if you're using direct mail, you don't have to reorient to anything. Um, and if your website is, your ads are still working really great, you know, keep it up. Just again, keep it in mind that if necessary, uh, that's what you'll want to do. You want to become compliant with the rules, written and unwritten, of Facebook, Google, and all the other websites that control the internet and therefore control the messages they want on there. Sounds good. My beautiful wife Michelle is here. Great seeing you. And uh, that'll uh, give me a hint that that'll do it for World Wide Web Wednesday as the sun has set over the mountains in the west and over my pool and can barely see anything back there. I will say goodbye for today for World Wide Wednesday. I'll be back tomorrow on Throwback Thursday where I already... Uh, Got a uh, message from a friend of mine today, and I'll be sharing something from the vault based on that for you with a business lesson that I guess I'll throw in there somewhere tomorrow. Catch you then. Over now for tonight. Bye-bye.